I have talked a lot about player and GM habits at the table both online and offline. From player habits to GM habits, there are all sorts of things we can learn to be better players and GMs at our table. And while I've talked about grand lists in very similar videos here and here, I haven't talked in much specificity about specific behavior. So we're going to be talking about that very point. We'll be talking about how to deal with toxic players and specifically toxic player habits in D&D and TTRPGs. First, let's answer the question, why do toxic player habits emerge? Well, it could be a number of different things. It could be not establishing boundaries early in game on what is acceptable and not acceptable at your table. It could be behaviors and traits that the player learned from other media and tables that they think is acceptable in a TTRPG table. It could be a lack of social awareness, or it could be that the players might not know the best social etiquette at your specific TTRPG table. Or it could be a misunderstanding between GM and player. And that's only some of the examples I could think of. Let me know down below in the comments if you have any yourself. And while those questions are really important to ask, we also need to answer what does a toxic player look like? So to clarify, a toxic player is not the same thing as a toxic habit of players. Toxic players are people who more than likely know they have bad habits and are entirely inconsiderate of others' feelings at the table. This player is intrinsically dedicated to bad gameplay for others because of, say, underlying issues. Those issues could be past trauma or unresolved feelings. You know that they are a toxic player, I think, when you confront them. They are combative and challenge every minor concern. When you present the issue, they are rude, they might gaslight you, and are generally disrespectful. This kind of behavior in my years of GMing is rare, but can happen. And I recommend dealing with this by asking them to leave your game, period. Because likely, this person or people are not going to listen to the conversation that you bring to them at all. Whereas toxic habits are behaviors and actions that players show with inherently meaning ill intent. In fact, there might not be any data to back this up, but I think lots of people don't want to harm each other on purpose. The habits that players do do are just by accident and might not realize that. And sometimes habits might not always be intentional because sometimes people are dealing with loads of other mental stuff. In fact, there's something I forgot to mention earlier, neurodivergency. There are loads of neurodivergent players in the TTRPG hobby and many people exist on that neurodivergent spectrum. So it's important when communicating bad player habits to ask if appropriate and close with the other person about accessibility options and neurodivergency at their table. Open, honest communication will be your biggest friend. And sometimes habits might be a combo of neurodiversity and habits learned from their family, friends, and loved ones. Of course, I am not the most familiar or educated on this topic. I am not a doctor and I also am more neurotypical on the neurodiversity spectrum. Plus, I'm also not in the disabled community or disabled communities so I don't want to speak on behalf of them. So, as a recommendation, I say go and check out Fate's Accessibility Toolkit because this toolkit will help you create and write disabled characters into your games and support disabled players as well as neurodiverse players. And if you do have any extra resources, please let me know down below in the comment section. And there are a variety of toxic player habits that we need to address. Here's some I've noticed. There's the spotlight hogger. These folk steal the spotlight or attention from other players. Maybe a player is in the middle of their turn or role playing an awesome scene, and this other player interjects with something out of character or irrelevant. Maybe your bard is giving an amazing soliloquy, and all of a sudden another player asks, Hey, y'all wanna get pizza? That's super rude and just really annoying if all of a sudden you're having this awesome conversation or awesome piece of dialogue, or just a really cool character moment and someone steals the spotlight with something out of character or entirely irrelevant or, well, something that their character should do. Next is the instigator. They will instigate and flame a problem that it otherwise is already addressed. Maybe a player knows that something bothers a GM and has already outlined that for players not to do. This player will jokingly bring it up or mention it in the game, even when it bears no importance whatsoever. Next 
is the atmosphere breaker. You know, when you're sending this atmosphere, especially when it's serious, you get that one player that interrupts it when it's really, really not necessary. That's the kind of person. Next is the player that's always late. This person is always late to your TTRPG. No matter when you give them a schedule, they are constantly and consistently late. This is likely a habit of bad time management on the player, and also the player probably not caring about the other player's and GM's time. And with that, we can start answering the question of how to deal with toxic player habits. First, let's gauge if this habit is really disturbing or not. For example, maybe a player is on their phone quite a lot during their game session. This might not actually bother anyone at the table, but who knows, maybe it might bother you, or maybe it might not bother you at all and bother your players. And the best way to know is to ask, and is to gauge yourself to see if that really is something you want to address. And if it isn't bothering anyone, then maybe it's not that worth addressing to anyone. This also could be the case of neurodiversity. Neurodiversity is a spectrum, and I say, when in doubt, ask the players, especially if you're friends, about ways to help them better focus, or if that's something they just need to do during their game. If so, then have a small conversation about ways that we can both hold each other accountable, and also ways to make sure that we aren't stepping over each other's foots. What ultimately matters is that if a player seems not engaged, it might not actually be the case. Talk to them in private and ask if they're having fun and are engaged, and believe them for whatever answer they give, assuming you have a good relationship with that person. Next is to see what about that habit is bothering you. Why does it annoy you? Think deeply on that habit. Maybe a player is over-talking you when they're excited or thrilled as you present information. Maybe a player is backseat driving as you're trying to make a judgment call on a roll. Whatever it is, write it out. Maybe talk it with your other friends, especially those who are not at your table. Take some time to think on it for a moment before you ultimately address this to the player. So, how do you address it? First. I recommend that you clearly address the habit with the player out of game and privately. Present what you have to say as an I statement and not an accusatory you statement. State how it made you feel and about why that action made you feel the way it did. Tell them how they could possibly change their behavior and have an open conversation about that. Who knows? There may very well be other issues that you'd even consider that your player wanted to bring up. Now. The change of behavior will depend on the kind of action it is, so that's variable and only you can figure that out. However, make sure that this conversation is dealt with in a mature and sensible fashion, and one where there aren't bad feelings being thrown about. And I know not everyone is conflict-oriented, I understand that. However, respect, transparency, and affirmations will go a long way for your game. Calling it a bad habit does not make you or that person evil or extremely awful. You are human, flesh and blood. You have habits that you learned that are likely not going to always fit with all tables. So it's important to discuss what those habits are and that we can all have an open conversation about how we can all be better friends, family and loved ones at our favorite D&D or other TTRPG. And on that caveat, here are some things you shouldn't do when you're addressing problems. Don't. Try to embarrass the person, especially for your friend, family, or loved one, especially in front of other people. That is wrong and just disrespectful. Don't solve out-of-game issues in-game. Don't kill off a PC because they were being really toxic to you or they were being really rude by accident. And finally, don't be accusatory when approaching the conversation. In conclusion, I think most people do annoying or quote-unquote toxic behavior because it's by accident. They don't realize that what they're doing is annoying or harmful to the table dynamic. Generally, when you tell people what you're doing is frustrating or annoying, they're going to change their behavior or take steps to change it. And if they don't, and if they continue to be rude and obnoxious, then it's best that either A, you leave the table, or B, you kick them out. Because at the end of the day, we are all trying to be better people at the table, and talking about our issues, especially when it's impeding your gaming experience, is an important conversation. Folks, who are interested in playing with you will work with you to accommodate when they can. But what if the issue isn't a player issue, but specifically with your GMing skills? What if you feel like an imposter? Well, I have a video about imposter syndrome in D&D and TTRPGs and how you can deal with it. So go check out that video to improve your GMing skills. And as always, I'm your average everyday queer host, Lurdy Disposition, 
hope you all have an awesome day. Ciao.